Hello everyone and welcome to the second game uh, of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca tournament, uh, the interzonal tournament and sorry about uh, the long uh, intro in my previous video, uh, but it is the first game in the series and you know your vast knowledge will not increase by itself. So uh, in the first game Bobby was able to only uh, get a draw, uh, here he faces a former world champion Vasily Smyslov uh, and he does have the black pieces, so it's gonna be a, a very exciting game, uh, let's see how game number two went. Uh, Smyslov opens with c4, so the English opening. We have g6 by Bobby, uh, knight to c3, bishop to g7, the great snake variation, uh, g3 and c5 now, uh, going for the symmetrical variation. Uh, bishop to g2, we have knight to c6, uh, b3, e6 and bishop to b2. Uh, knight to g2, e7 uh, and here already uh, it's it, it's only move number seven. Smyslov plays knight to a4. Uh, it's uh, kind of breaking the opening principles. You're moving the same piece twice in the opening, where you know you could uh, simply continue on developing pieces. Uh, but it seems like a perfectly logical move. Knight a4, forcing uh, a trade of the dark square bishops. You can see uh, that Bobby placed all of his pawns on light squares, so it makes sense to get rid of the dark square bishop. Uh, and okay, Bobby plays bishop captures on b2, knight captures on b2, and now Bobby castles. Uh, we have e3, uh, d5 by Fisher, c captures on d5, knight captures on d5, and knight to e2 now, and b6. Now you can see that uh, Fisher will develop the light square bishop either via bishop to b7 or bishop to a6. Uh, and the, the, uh, the pawns uh, on light squares here on the king side will not be a problem. Uh, we have d4 and here bishop to a6. Bishop to a6 is a very nice move by Fisher, uh, kind of preventing uh, Smyslov from castling. If he would castle immediately, then c captures on d4, uh, wins a pawn. e captures on d4, uh, d4 and now uh, bishop captures on e2. Queen captures, knight captures here, uh, Fisher wins a pawn and also, uh, you know, maintain, maintains a better position. Uh, here, after bishop to a6, uh, d captures on c5 was played, uh, but now Fisher, of course, doesn't recapture. Immediately, he goes for the initiative. Queen to f6, so a nice pawn sacrifice, uh, but, uh, you know, he, he, he does get uh, a lot of initiative in return. Uh, already attacking the knight on b2. So that little maneuver, knight to a4, followed by knight, bringing the knight back to b2, uh, when the dark square bishops were exchanged, uh, allows Fisher for this knight, nice uh, uh, pawn sacrifice uh, for the initiative. Uh, knight to c4, and now knight to c3, uh, attacking, uh, attacking the queen. Uh, we have knight captures on c3, uh, bush, uh, queen captures on c3, and now uh, you can't really block this check. Uh, if you try and block with the queen, Queen captures on a1 is coming. Uh, if you block with the knight, knight to d2, then you lose the game immediately. Uh, do you see how black wins the game? Uh, try to try to pause the video. You don't have to like pause it for a very long time. Uh, it's not a very difficult tactic. Uh, but still, for those of you who did pause the video and were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, you are an excellent player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, knight to e5 is the move that would win you the game. You can even, even offer the rook here on a8, doesn't really matter. Uh, you can't allow knight to d3 check. Uh, as you can see, this bishop is slicing all the way to f1, the knight on d2 is pinned, so you cannot allow knight d3 check. Uh, white has to block it, bishop e4, but then f5 and it's all over. You have to decide what to do with the bishop. Uh, either you move the bishop and then rook a to d8 will win. There's no defense against knight to f3. Whatever white plays, knight to f3, you have to capture the knight. Queen captures and now queen captures d2 will be checkmate. Uh, and even if you don't move, uh, after f5, if you play something like bishop captures on a8, then it's uh, pretty much the same, knight e3 check. Uh, you have to go in, in front of the bishop, knight, knight b2 check, you lose the queen and the game. Uh, so very nice idea, queen to c3 check, uh, king to f1. So now uh, Smyslov uh, loses uh, castling privileges and uh, it will be very hard to develop this rook. Uh, we have rook f to d8, attacking Smyslov's queen, uh, queen to c1, offering a queen trade, uh, and now bishop captures on c4 with check. Pawn captures and now queen to d3 check. Uh, king to g1 and now rook a to c8. So uh, Fisher doesn't have a lot here, but Smyslov is uh, for the time being playing without his h1 rook. C captures on b6, a captures on b6 and now queen to b2. Uh, we have knight to a5. Uh, 
h4, it's really not all that easy to figure out what to do here with the white pieces. You could grab uh, the pawn on b6, then white will grab on c4, doesn't really do all that much. Uh, what Smyslov really has to do is develop this uh, rook somehow. There's really no good way to develop it. Uh, one way might be h4, h5, and perhaps bring your rook to h4 and then somehow develop it. Uh, but it will not be easy. Uh, Smyslov does go for h4. Uh, we have knight captures on c4 attacking Smyslov's queen. Uh, queen to f6 and here queen to f5 now. Now Bobby is confident uh, that uh, his position is so much better that uh, he can go for a queen trade. Uh, queen captures on f5, we have g captures on f5 uh, and now h5. Smyslov still has to develop uh, the rook on h1. Uh, we have rook to d2, uh, Fisher activates his rook. Uh, we have rook to c2, c1 uh, and now rook to c5. Now the knight on c4 can move as the, the c rook is protected. Uh, rook to h4 <clears throat> with a double attack on the knight and now comes knight to e5. Uh, rook captures on c5, b captures on c5 and rook to a4. Uh, we have c4 uh, as of course pass pawns must be pushed. That pawn is already on c4, c3, c2, c1 is coming very soon. Uh, we have h6, here Smyslov uh, threatens rook to a8 check, uh, which would of course result in checkmate after Fisher blocks, so you do have to move the king. Uh, king to f8, and now comes rook to a8 check. Uh, king to e7, and now rook to c8. Uh, you have to, uh, it's, it's a general rule that rooks belong behind past pawns, your own rooks or your opponent's rooks, but they, they belong behind past pawns. Uh, rook captures on a2, bishop to f1 with a double attack on the c4 pawn, and now simply rook to c2 defending. Uh, king to g2, we have knight to g4 now, threatening the f2 pawn, uh, and here Smyslov plays a king to g1, but it doesn't help him all that much. Uh, not, not only capturing on f2 was a threat, also knight captures on e3 was a threat as the f2 pawn is pinned. So here king to g1 is played, uh, Smyslov is hoping for Fischer to capture on f2, uh, so maybe he would capture on c4, but it doesn't help him all that much. Uh, rook captures on f2 is played, and now bishop has to capture. You can't capture with the rook because of rook captures on f1, that's the problem. King captures, knight captures e3, check, king moves, uh, you lose the rook. Uh, you're down two pawns and the whole piece, this would be completely winning for black. Uh, so after rook to f2, bishop captures on c4 was played, and now rook to f3, uh, going after the e3 pawn and the g3 pawn. Uh, king g2 defending, now rook captures on e3, Fisher is now up two pawns. Uh, rook to h8, going after the h7 pawn, uh, Fisher captures the h6 pawn, rook captures on h7, and now knight back to g4. Uh, bishop to b5. Uh, we have rook to b3 attacking the bishop, bishop to c6, uh, and now rook to b2 check. King g1 and now knight to e5. Uh, see how Fisher is attacking that light square bishop. Uh, bishop to a8 and now uh, rook to b8, forcing the bishop all the way to h1. Uh, bishop to h1 and uh, after Smyslov played this bishop to h1 move, uh, he also resigned the game. Uh, the game, I believe the game was adjourned here, so uh, it was supposed to be continued the next day, uh, but uh, Smyslov resigned here without even waiting for Bobby's response. Uh, why did Smyslov resign here? Uh, well, he is down two pawns, and uh, while you perhaps could hold this, uh, you know, to some degree in some positions, uh, he thought that here it would be pointless to play this position on against uh, against Bobby. Uh, here black can uh, play rook to b3, uh, attack the b3 pawn, and there's really not all that much you can do here. Uh, your, your bishop is, uh, well, it's not a very active piece there, you have to defend the g3 pawn. Uh, if you play rook to h3, then you're just gonna have a lousy rook on h3 for the entire game. Uh, you can defend it with king g2, king f2. If you try king f2, then knight g4, check is coming, you have to bring the king to g2 anyway, so you might as well put it on g2 immediately. Uh, and here, let's say knight g4, uh, white has a terrible bishop on h1 that's really not going anywhere, it's really hard to develop this rook, you could try rook h8 to bring it back into the game, uh, but now rook to b1, now the king will never be able to leave g2 as he does have to guard the bishop on h1 uh, if rook leaves h8, uh, so uh, let's say rook to a8 and now simply e5. Black can simply push the e pawn to victory. Uh, let's say check, king f6, check again, king g7, you tuck away the king behind the f7 pawn, uh, and after you attack the pawn, you can even push e4. Uh, you can never capture here because knight e3 check will pick up the rook. Uh, so there's there's really nothing to do here. White white is without a move, and black will simply push the e pawn to victory. 
So after this bishop to h1 move, Smyslov th uh, thought, okay, I had enough, uh, good game, Bobby. So this is uh, game number two from Palma de Mallorca uh, Interzonal Tournament uh, in 1970. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, here we can check out uh, we can check out uh, the standings after the tournament, so you can uh, you know uh, remember it. Uh, okay, you did say that I might have spoiled uh, the result uh, before actually <laughs> uh, finishing the series, but uh, as this is an interzonal tournament, uh, you know you have to win it to qualify for the candidates. Well, not win it, but uh, be in the top six contenders uh, to qualify for the candidates tournament. And since you all know, Bobby Fischer did win the World Chess Championship. It's, I I kind of don't think it's. Uh, uh, I spoiled the result, but okay, okay, I, I do see your point. Uh, so let's uh, let's not show it until the end of the series, just uh, anymore. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the game, uh, a brilliant game against Smyslov, and really how how he pulled it off after this uh, uh, like move seven, where Smyslov just went knight to a four, uh, and it's a perfectly reasonable decision. Uh, getting rid of the dark square bishop uh, as Fisher has all of his pawns and light squares, uh, but how Fisher uses this uh, for for a nice initiative, uh, you know, really just uh, just a magnificent uh, game. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank Nicolas Kretu for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon with uh, game number three from from this tournament from Bobby's perspective. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.